Hi friends. I hope that you have been well. I know that it's it's been a little while since we have spoken face to face. Uh, I have not worn makeup or been on camera since October, which is kind of crazy because I used to wear makeup almost every day. And uh, but you know, quarantine things, right? So as you may have guessed, today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I usually put out. Uh, I am very, very excited to be able to show you guys my new studio space. It, it has been a pretty intense couple weeks getting it all ready and set up, but I am very excited about it. So for those of you who don't know, up until couple of weeks ago, I had been living with a roommate in this apartment and basically this space used to be both my studio and my bedroom. And it, you know, it's a fairly uh, spacious space. So I was able to make it work, but it did, you know, as over time get really, really cramped. And so now I live in this apartment by myself and I was able to move all of my, you know, my bed, my dresser, all that stuff into a separate space. So now I actually have a dedicated studio space and a dedicated bedroom, which I think is going to make a world of difference in having a work-life balance, which is something that I have a really hard time with. And yeah, so, it's really surreal. I'm kind of at a loss for words. I have to give a humongous thank you to my patrons who are literally the reason why this is even possible for me to live in this apartment by myself, to have a studio space. And so thank you so much to everyone who is on my Patreon page, who, you know, whether or not you are a patron now or previously, thank you so much. It means the world to me. By the way, guys, if you're wondering why I am doing this reporter news anchor style is because this is legit the microphone that I use for all of the audio on my YouTube videos. No joke. And so this is what I'm going to be using for our tour. And it is a rock band mic. Yeah, like... The, the game. <laughs> no joke. I'm borrowing it from somebody and the audio sounds pretty good. So I figured why not? And uh, I put a cute colored pop socket thingy on it. And yeah, that's, that's why we're doing this if you're wondering. And so, yeah, we're going to start this. The video will start out with me showing you guys what the space used to look like a year ago and then what it looked like a couple of weeks ago before I started making the changes. And then we'll kind of go through a little montage of me cleaning up the space and decorating and everything. And then we will do the tour. So roll the footage. <laughs> so almost to the day, this is what my space looked like a year ago. And so my bed, as you saw, was under the window and I had everything lined up on one side, one corner of the room, and it was chaotic. And I'm not even joking, this is kind of what the space looked like at most times. I had all of my art supplies that tucked away in the corner. This is what my filming setup used to look like. And I just had one light. I had all these old paintings stashed behind my bed. And then the other side of the room was basically empty. And then up until a few weeks ago, this was the new setup that I had. So I'd moved my bed near the closets. It was impossible to get into those closets, by the way. And I had my giant studio light stashed uh, in front of my dresser, which I had to move constantly when I wanted to get into my dresser. I had gotten a standing desk near the window. This side of the room mostly stayed the same, still crazy, constantly just throwing stuff around all over the place, very messy. And my cable management just non-existent. And I had been slowly trying to declutter at this point. So that's why there's stuff stashed on the tabletops there. But I mean, honestly, that's kind of what it looked like all the time. And basically whenever I would film, I would just move things around. 
So of course, before I began painting, I moved all of the furniture and the items away from the wall, but I didn't end up filming that part. So here you see me just mixing up some adorable pink paint. And I actually used this paint for my bedroom as well. And so that's why you can see that I had already been in the works and painting the walls was quite the process because I don't have a ladder. I had to very precariously stand on a chair to get to the higher ends of the wall. But in the end, it was, it was definitely worth it. I think that having the pink accent wall in my studio space helps uh, the side of my room with the electronics and dark equipment pop a little bit. And of course I had to mask off the fixtures and trimmings to try and get it as clean as possible. Definitely wasn't perfect, but you know, I am definitely not a professional house painter whatsoever. So, you know, I've did my best. I really just bought Sims. It was on sale for 99. Man, what a weird time of the time. Need to keep busy. Trying to eat the hours away. Who knew that I like Milky Way? Wake up, I'm ready to go. Yeah, feeling so good in control. Yeah, think of the places I could be. So I give up and watch TV. I think I'm going crazy, pacing around my room. Tell me that it gets better being alone, alone together. The world is upside down. And The sun and tracing clouds I can't believe I'm missing crowds Time moving so slow Again, I'm staring at my phone Yesterday feels a year ago Wake up, I'm ready to go Yeah, feeling so good in control Yeah, then think of the places I could be So I give up and watch the TV Then after that, I was able to start building my brand new adjustable standing desk, which was very kindly sent to me by FlexiSpot. The desk that I received is the EQ3 in all white. And as you saw, the hardware was clearly labeled and organized, which definitely made the building process much more straightforward. And here you can see me playing around with the settings. So of course there's an up and a down button, and then there is four options for presets. So you can have a preset standing, sitting position, and then the three and the four can be for maybe if you were sharing this desk with somebody else or if you had other presets that you needed. And being someone who now works from home, I spend a lot of time at a desk. Previously, I would experience back pain from sitting down for such long periods of time, but now that I have the option to stand, it definitely helps with my sore back. And since I'm on my feet, it really encourages me to take more breaks to move around more as well. Then for the final and most fun part of my studio transformation was decorating. So over the years, I have been somewhat of a hoarder. I used to work at an art supply store that had a framing department. And so whenever there were scrap mat boards left over from people's framing orders, I would save the really cute colors and I'd cut them down to standard sizes and take them home. Similarly, whenever there were picture frames that were slightly defective or damaged, employees were allowed to take them home because otherwise they just would have been trashed anyway since they weren't deemed, you know, sellable to customers. And so for many years, I had been housing all of these various mat boards and picture frames. And of course, I had also been purchasing prints and artwork from artists as well. And all of which I just kept tucked away, collecting dust, telling myself that I would eventually hang all of these things up. But of course I procrastinated and it never happened. So now that I have an official studio space, I felt like it was the perfect time to finally get around to hanging up all this beautiful artwork that I've collected. 
Many of the prints that I own didn't perfectly fit into the picture frames and normally I would have liked to get the matte board windows actually cut by a framer, but obviously with lockdowns, that's not really an option. So as a quick fix, as you saw, I just put the matte boards as a background for the prints. And then here you can see me rearranging the artwork on my living room floor so that I could get a sense of where I wanted everything to go before I actually started mounting anything to the walls. And instead of using nails in the walls, I actually chose to use these adhesive hooks instead because that way it's not damaging the wall and that way I can rearrange the artwork whenever I want to without having to deal with any holes that I have to patch up and I can you know, expand my collection and move things around pretty easily. Then after all the artwork is up, I cleaned up the space and now I can finally show you the finished studio. All right, so I get motion sickness with like handy cam work. So we're just gonna have you guys on a tripod here and I'm gonna showcase the stuff. So um, yeah, so over here we've got some drawers stacked. Not very exciting. It's literally just like printer paper, stamps, uh, sleeves for packing orders, like nothing kind of boring stuff. So we're not going to go through them. And then I've got a shelving unit here, which I think definitely will change a lot over time. I'm kind of low in stock on merchandise and stuff right now because my shop is not currently open yet, but I just recently got this fantastic little Ikea shelving drawer unit, and I'm really excited to be able to put merchandise in there. I think it'll be a lot easier to organize and get into things. And then I have a ton of wood panels down here, just waiting, waiting to be painted on. And so I've got a bunch of sticker sheets down in this little cardboard unit here. I have these plastic bins that have little dividers in them and I have my stickers sort of just like in little baggies stashed in there. And in here I've got kind of a miscellaneous stuff. So I got some keychains. I have some enamel pins in there and I threw in, I have some of these like cute little ornaments that I painted for like art markets and I never listed it on my shop cause I kind of forgot I had them. So I think when I do open my shop, I will throw those in there. But yeah, so basically this is kind of my merchandise unit right now and on the bottom, which I'm not going to show you because it's just in cardboard boxes, but I have my zines um, on the bottom of the shelf to keep it weighted. You know, we got to make sure that this isn't going to topple over. And yeah, I'm looking forward to making more merchandise for my shop and then hopefully I can fill this up with more things. All right, and moving into the middle of the studio space, we've got my first standing desk here, which uh, used to be underneath my window, but now I have moved it kind of into the center of the room, kind of like an island. And I think that this will be great for when I need that extra space to pack orders, or if I'm working on a big art project, things like that. And as you can see, this one actually is a crank desk. So it's got the handle here that comes out and you literally wind it to change or adjust the height of the desk. And over here, we've got really ancient MacBook. It is, I think, 10 years old. Uh, yeah, it's super old. It really can't do a lot because it's so old, but I hang on to it because it technically still kind of works. It's kind of a glorified hard drive at this point. It holds a lot of old files and it has some 
TV shows and movies on there that I sometimes play while I work on stuff. So yeah, it's mostly useless at this point. And then I've got this huge studio light here. It is not very pretty looking, but it is definitely a requirement for my YouTube content because I don't get a lot of sunlight in here. And even though right now it's the middle of the day, it's super snowy and gloomy out right now. So it is not very bright in here without it. So right now I have it just pointing up at the ceiling to help illuminate the room. And normally when I do most of my YouTube videos, I will have it obviously pointing down at the desk where I will film me painting and drawing. And then I have this little one here, which I will usually have on the opposite end of the desk to illuminate the desktop coming at both ends. And now we get to move on to my brand new standing desk, which was very kindly sent to me for free from FlexiSpot. Thank you so much to FlexiSpot for sending me this beautiful standing desk. So as you would have seen with my previous one, I had gotten a hand crank adjustable desk. And at the time when I purchased that one, the hand crank was only available with the bamboo top, not a white tabletop. And I was like, all right, that's fine. I'll settle with the bamboo, which is fine. But when FlexiSpot reached out to me and let me pick my table, I was like, yes, I can finally have a white tabletop, which I'm really excited about. And the reason why I prefer the white tabletop is I find it's just a better, it feels like a more like clean slate for photographing my work or for filming art videos and things like that. So really excited about that. And the really cool thing about this is that it is motorized. So, so cool. Very, very convenient because, you know, the, the hand crank is, it's not a big deal, but this definitely saves me a little bit of effort and energy. And then on top of my desk here, I've got this really cute Spirited Away mug I got when I was in Disney World. And then I have my Totoro mug pencil holder that I was gifted from my friend. And the cute little leopard is by Amy Ceramics. Okay, and then underneath my standing desk, I have put my rolling drawer underneath here and it just carries a bunch of different art supplies. So this is my watercolor drawer, more or less. We've got my gouache drawer and uh, inks there. And then we've got my watercolor papers down here and even more papers down here. In this shelf here, we've got my mm, partly used sketchbooks that I'm hopefully going to actually get around to finishing at some point. And then over on the opposite side here, we've got a bunch of art books and some typography books there. And then below that, we've got some miscellaneous set of art tools here. We got some markers, some paint markers. We've got a gigantic bin of paintbrushes. We've got some inks here, a really dusty candle that I really need to finally light. And then some other knickknacks there. And then we move next to it over here. We've got all my markers, fine liners, colored pencils. And by the way, these little shelving units uh these were literally built out of foam core foam board and hot glue i made them a long time ago and they happened to perfectly fit into this unit and i was really excited about that and they really hold up quite well actually pretty impressed with it and then underneath i have even more sketchbooks these ones are ones that i'm not using or have been barely used or completely untouched and then when we move over to the other side here, we've got some graphic novels that I have yet to read. These fables 
one these ones are borrowed from my friend and then these ones were gifted to me and then i have some zines and art books in here and other these are this is my own zine here knocking stuff over all right this calendar is totally outdated but i love these little cats so i keep them anyways and i got this little cute wiener dog pen that i never use because again it's too cute so i just keep it in here for now also yes i have this book here that i've been borrowing from somebody it is great for figure drawing so hell yeah all right and then the final parts of this shelf not super exciting more unused sketchbooks notebooks a box of acrylics at the very bottom there that i barely use i've got my jelly gouache here a taza gouache this bin of just random knickknacks that i use for photographing my illustrations i've got some new pens from ohuhu in here that i haven't used yet random magazines and things some tabletop easels and a box of just invoices bills boring paperwork things then over here i have another drawer unit filled with more random stuff like sticky notes business cards washi tape etc then we have my beautiful gallery wall which i think really helps bring so much life into the room I definitely think that having all this artwork up will definitely help keep me inspired and motivated while I work. And I think that it looks really, really nice together, which I didn't really do on purpose. It just happened to kind of all fit together, I guess, in terms of my particular taste in artwork and taste in particular color palettes. And then moving on to the other side of the room, we have my glass corner desk where I have my desktop computer. Above it, I have a glass magnetic calendar. It's blank at the moment, but I'll fill it in for February soon. And my super expensive, but mega cute mechanical keyboard that I'm totally obsessed with. I also recently got this adorable mouse to match it and this large desk mat to cover up my glass tabletop, which I think looks a lot cleaner. And of course, we've got some more beautiful artwork. Then in the very last section of the room, I have this shelving unit that has shipping supplies, my printer, computer, scanner, graphics tablet, and other electronic type equipment hidden away in that box. And then of course, some final decorative touches to send off this studio tour. Well, friends, we have come to the end of the studio tour. I hope that you had fun seeing the transformation from what it used to look like literally a year ago to what it looks like now. And it is surreal, guys. I can't believe that I finally have a dedicated art studio. I wasn't sure this day would ever come, to be honest. I got so accustomed to having my bedroom and workspace in the same area for so long. And now that I officially have my own studio space, I can't believe it. It's insane. Um, and like you guys, some of you watching at home, I would watch other people's studio tours and studio vlogs and stuff. And I would be so envious of what they had and what I didn't have. And so I just wanna say that while I understand that this is a lot of space, this is a lot of stuff, I'm very fortunate to have come to this point, but I really wanna stress the fact that you don't need all of this to start your career or to make great artwork or make great content. As you would have seen, this is this is a brand new space for me. Like I was living in a really cramped, chaotic situation prior, like up until a couple of weeks ago. 
And this space, all this stuff that I have, the art supplies, the furniture, uh, this has been years and years in the making. I have accumulated all these things over time. And this is a result of years of working at it, of being really driven and dedicated to making this happen. And I just wanna say lastly, that I would not be in this position without your support. I am constantly bewildered and amazed that people choose to support me, whether it's from Patreon, my shop, purchasing from my table when we were able to do conventions from, you know, even just watching my YouTube videos and commenting and interacting with me on Instagram live streams or wherever I am doing the thing. And honestly, like all of these things have led me to this point to be able to have a studio space and to continue to make more content for you guys. So I'm just so grateful that you have followed along with my journey and are continuing to support me in this pursuit. And you are literally making my dreams come true. Like I am at a loss for words that this, that this is what, where I'm at right now. So thank you so much. And now that I have this space, this means I can start doing studio vlogs, which I'm still really nervous about because this like vlogging style is, very new to me, but I'm hoping that in doing these studio vlogs, you guys can get a better sense of what my day-to-day -day life looks like as an illustrator and content creator. And I think that the reason why I really like other watching other artists' studio vlogs is that it helps to, to get an idea of what the person, the artist is like behind the work. And I think that for those of you who are also aspiring artists, that you can have a sense of what it kind of looks like. And, and lastly, I think that YouTube content, studio vlogs, it's something that helps keep each other company because I definitely know that I often feel like when I watch studio vlogs or have them playing in the background, I feel like, you know, I'm hanging out with somebody and that's really nice. And, you know, while we can't physically hang out with people right now, it's nice to at least have a way to feel like you're being accompanied by somebody else. So I hope that I can be that for you. And I'm going to stop rambling now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was entertaining and I will see you in the next one. Bye.